You're listening to the Naptime Empires podcast with my mom, Nikki Ellidge Brown. Mom, your show's on. Thanks, bud. I got it from here. Welcome to the Naptime Empires podcast, refreshingly honest conversations on the realities of parenthood and entrepreneurship. I'm your host, Nikki Ellidge Brown. Let's get started. You may or may not have noticed if you're just new to the podcast and you're kind of picking and choosing where you go, then sweet, I'm glad to have you. If you've been listening in chronological order, then you may have noticed in season two, we haven't had many guest conversations, right? I mean, literally we've had one with the amazing Nicole Walters, who, by the way, I got to have a fantastic face-to-face visit and brunch with this past weekend when she was near my neck of the woods over in Galveston. But all that to say, if you haven't checked out Nicole's episode, definitely check that out. I'll link to it in the show notes here. But I want you to know that, of course, I always love having this conversation with you. I always feel like my solo episodes are conversations, but I do have a number of guest conversations that I will be sharing with you over the next few months as we close out season two. So you can get excited about that. In the meantime, I wanted to kick us back off in terms of the guest conversations with my buddy, Jill Stanton of Screw the 9 to 5. So she and her husband, Josh, founded Screw the 9 to 5. It's their slice of the internet where they help entrepreneurs attract more attention to their brands, make more money in their businesses, and get more out of their lives through simple strategies, how-tos, and behind-the-scenes glimpses into the realities of building a business online. In this episode, this conversation is full of the -the behind-the-scenes glimpses. Jill's got an inappropriate love for trashy TV, has the mouth of a sailor, you know I love sailors, and isn't afraid of a tall glass of gin, except, of course, when she's pregnant, which she was actually 38 weeks pregnant when we recorded this episode, and that's exactly where I wanted her. I was like, I really want to bottle this moment in time. You know, you're a first-time mom, what to expect when you're expecting and all of that. I just, I was like, I want to bottle it before he gets here and before you see what it's like, because you know, and she's very aware. She's like, I know that I don't know, but I'm open to whatever it's going to be like when he's actually here. And so I wanted to just bottle it and just kind of capture this moment because we've had a lot of women on the show who have had their babies after their businesses, but I just didn't have this moment documented. Like when you're literally in that expectant, also really tired and ready to have this little one in your arms. I just wanted to capture that moment in time. And that's what we did. It's such a great conversation. A little bit of background before I tell you exactly what we cover. We met years ago when Jill and Josh had me on their podcast, the Screw the 9 to 5 podcast, and I still remember like having that conversation and sitting at my kitchen table in Hawaii, and we stayed in touch via Facebook, finally got to hug and meet in real life in San Diego last year, had some amazing late night visits at Mastermind Talks in Carmel, which again, we'll share some fun stories about that in the conversation, but honestly, whether we're iMessaging and voice noting or FaceTiming while I organize my pantry like we did shortly before we recorded this conversation. Jill's just become a treasured part of what I call my cabinet of friend tours. And this is one of my favorite conversations to date. It's a little longer than usual, naturally, just because we cover so much. And I just want you to know this is the stuff I love chatting about with my buddies behind the scenes every week. So this is kind of a dream because I'm always like, I just want to have conversations with my friends and record them because I know that so many people will feel like, ah, oh, it's so good to hear someone else say that, right? So again, we recorded this conversation during that magic window when she was 38 weeks pregnant and she ended up going to 42 or just beyond before Kai made his arrival. So I just think that you'll enjoy this perspective as a first time expectant mom who already had a thriving business in play before the little one came along. It's just a unique perspective to add to our conversation. So specific things that we talk about, a simple reframe and some book recommendations that take a whole lot of pressure off of parenting, how Jill and Josh started their business journey the week of their wedding and what inspired the Screw the 9 to 5 brand. It's so fun. Why the niche till it hurts advice just never felt right for her. The aha moment that she had recently around their business and the vision and their goals how she sees the whole online business world evolving and what people are actually looking for right now, why she's giving herself permission to unbutton her biz pants. You'll have to listen (laughs) to why I brought that metaphor into the conversation. 
we have a juicy conversation about why bigger isn't always better and the power of actual engagement and paying attention to the ones who are really listening and leaning into your conversation. We talk about what it's really like to run a growing business while pregnant. She talks about, you know, breaking it down trimester by trimester, giving yourself permission to take a breath and why it's so freaking hard for us to do that sometimes what she's excited about now and her ideal vision for life as a family of three. And then also at the end, some bonus tips for success working with your partner if you actually are a business partner with your life partner as well. And then here at the end, just stay tuned because I want to try something new and just give you some food for thought and a little bit of homework at the end of the conversation just to make it more actionable for you. So stay tuned and really don't forget, you can always listen at like one and a half speed if you want. Maybe even two. Probably not two. That may be a little much. I do that on Audible sometimes. Anyway, but just put us in your earbuds, whether you're going for a walk, doing laundry, doing the dishes, carpooling, and tag me and tag Jill on social media just so we can see you being part of this conversation. We hope that it serves you. Enjoy. All right, Jill, I really am hitting record <laughs> so that we start the conversation <laughs> before you go into labor because I was just asking you, in your 30 30- eight you said in three days 38 weeks yeah. and three days <gasps> oh, I never gee. even made it that far with Bryson like people would be like I'm 38 weeks pregnant I'm like I don't know what that feels like <laughs> I know when you told me that yesterday I was like oh my gosh it <laughs> is quite early <laughs> and it's funny that you I know that we're gonna start re- not recording but diving in soon but yeah when you were saying like oh I thought I'd have more time to be pregnant I'm like this chick is crazy. I am <laughs> so ready to not be pregnant. I just want to take a full breath. Like I can't wait to take a full breath. Yes. It's really like symbiotic or whatever it is because that's, I literally, I think that's what's left for him right now is just strengthening his lungs and all of that. So it's like he's stealing <laughs> from your breath yeah, so that man. he can practice having his. They do take up a lot of space up there. Oh, my stomach is like so hard because it's just all him. Yeah. Like I don't really have any room. It's really amazing to like when you're, you're like, wow, I just didn't realize that I could stretch like that. And yeah. And I'm sure it's about to get even more real with the stretching. (laughs) (laughs) TMI. The video. (laughs) video. I'll have to post that in the show notes. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm so excited to be having this conversation on the record because I just love you and I'm grateful to be able to, you know, text you solicited mom advice and stuff. Um, (laughs) But I really just wanted to bottle and capture this precious moment in time before he's on the outside, because it's just such a unique time. And I really wanted to have this conversation with you in particular, because you've already got your business going and now he's coming into the picture. And that was not the case for me because Bryson was already about, you know, toddler age, 18 months Mm -hmm. old or so when I started. And I know a lot of people who will listen to this podcast. They're like, well, I mean, I feel like maybe I do want to have kids one day, but I'm also super paranoid about how that's going to affect my business. And so just this state of mind that you're in where it's like, you're as prepared as you can be, but you know, just like with entrepreneurship, it's just on the job training really. And so I just wanted to kind of capture this and hear what's going on in your brain in this particular season. And I'm so grateful for it because I'm going to listen to it once he's out Yes, to be able to like, oh, that's what I was thinking. And it was like totally unfounded (laughs) (laughs) right? because I have all the feels going on. (laughs) Yes. The before and after. We all have like a (laughs) follow-up on how it's going now that he's napping in the other room right now. (laughs) And you've been such a huge help as well. And I'll shut up in a minute, but like, I just want to acknowledge you because there's been times where I've had moments just texting you or on phone calls with you where I've been in my head or like super stressed or at the mercy of people's negative advice. And you've Mm. just been such a godsend for me in helping me like stay calm and just realize that, you know, if we can build businesses and go through the emotional turmoil that is entrepreneurship, let's keep it real, Mm -hmm. then we can have a baby or two. Yeah. It's all that. It's like all the personal development. And actually, now that you say that, you don't necessarily need these books right now because you're just going to be focusing on like physical needs and snuggles and stuff for a while. But I've really been super interested in Dr. Shafali's work. And I will link to that into the show notes for anyone who's listening, because I just really appreciate her take and her perspective. And this other book called Magical Parent, Magical Child. But basically the principle is about 
Like they're our teachers. It's not like we're having these people and we created them. Like, no, they didn't. They're not of us. They're through us. You know, we called in these Mm -hmm. beings and they chose us to be their guides, but we're also learning from them. And so the book of this magical parent, magical child thing was like, I only read 15 pages of it so far, but it (laughs) shifted my entire perspective on parenting because it's like the childlike qualities of the playfulness and the curiosity and the resilience and all of these things. Like children are our teachers because we kind of beat that out of ourselves as we grow up Mm. into, you know, air quotes, adults. And so we are always learning from each other. So it's just silly how we've built this hierarchy to be like, adults know everything and little people need to turn into adults as soon as humanly possible. It's like, no, we're always learning. This is, we're here for each other. We were made for each other. And this relationship, if we choose to see it like that, where we're guiding them the best we can, but honoring that they are their own people and they're not ours to shape. We're just here to encourage them to be who they were created to be. It's just, it takes a lot of the pressure off one. I love that. And two, it just makes it a whole lot more enjoyable. So if I could just figure out how to apply that when Bryson turns into a werewolf at bath time every night <laughs> to like honor his sovereignty. Then, then we could really, we could really be going somewhere. So, and it's magical parent, magical child. Yes. Oh, I wrote that down because I'm like, yep, that's exactly what I want to read. Yeah. And the podcast. Well, I first heard Dr. Shafali on her Super Soul episode with. Oh, Oprah. I know exactly who you're talking about. Yes. The conscious parenting. Chick? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've been I, following her. Yeah. I ordered like all three of her books and then, but she's talking about like, well, not everyone needs to have kids. And if you're having kids to try to like fulfill a dream that you didn't have, then that's pretty effed up too, because the kid is their own spirit. You know, they're their own yeah. person and they're not ours to control or whatever, but we're like, no, you have to listen to me. You have to do what I say. And that's really more about our own issues. I mean, yes, we want to keep them safe and everything. There are certain things, of course, we need them to listen and learn, but really there's a lot to be learned from them and the way that they exist in the world. And even just thinking of that, I made a list of like at least three podcast ideas that I had just from observing Deacon in the world, like how he just Mm. babbles. Well, I'll save those for those Mm -hmm. podcast episodes because I won't have you with me for those. (laughs) Um, So what I want to talk about, normally my opening question is set up the stage of your business and your family. And normally the kiddos are already on the outside. I think you're the first pregnant mama guest that I've had. So sweet. I Breaking would like ground. <laughs> exactly. Every time my friends pregnant. Breaking oh, ground and water. Yeah. <laughs> Breaking ground, not water. Not just yet. We just need like 45 minutes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> but will you just set up the stage by this time? I've already read your bio, but like what's the business and how did this little one come into the picture? Just share what you want to share about the, like the frame and the perspective that this conversation is through. Yeah. So the business is screw the nine to five. We've been building it. Well, we've been building businesses together since 2012. We had a business before screw the nine to five, but the screw has been around for five years. Yes. Sorry. I just always assume you're talking to people who know what I'm talking about. (laughs) Josh and I have been building businesses online together for six years. So the screw kind of came about on our wedding week, which is like the week you're not supposed to work. And it was like, we were on our balcony in Costa Rica and we were just talking about wanting to share this journey because at the time we had replaced our income through this new business we were running. We were almost a year in, we were about to move to Thailand and we just wanted to share that journey. And Josh was like, yeah, but what would we call it? Like Bob Marley's plan. I'm a few Costa Rican rums in. And I was like, (laughs) you know, like screw the nine to five. (laughs) And we were like, oh my God. And it's just been a five-year process of trying to figure it out. Like, and this is why I love talking to you, Nikki, because, and we were talking yesterday just via text because I read one of your emails and you're so good at permission, like giving people Mm -hmm. permission to be honest and transparent with where they're really at. And if I'm keeping it real and being honest, like it has really been a five-year process of trying to sort our stuff out and figure out what this brand is because it's not like we are known for one thing, you know, screw the nine to five is a very broad brand. And so it's really been a struggle for us trying to figure that out when the going advice is niched down till it hurts. And we're like, that doesn't apply to us. Um, So it's really been a process for us. And it's recently, only recently have we had a major aha for us that just finally feels so aligned. And I think for so long we were focused on like, well, screw the nine to five is a place where you go to learn how to make money online. But it just felt so restrictive and so dependent on us getting results for people. Mm -hmm. And that just felt so 
heavy when we finally got real with ourselves. And so we've realized like, what do we want it to be? And like, once your business is making money, like then what? You know, like there's so much more that goes into entrepreneurship than making some dollars online. It's lifestyle, it's health, it's relationships, it's family, it's going through stuff like having kids and it's money and it's investing and it's, you know, it's so much. And so we've finally realized that we want it to be the number one lifestyle brand for entrepreneurs where you can come and not only talk about business, but also the life and the health aspects that really truly impact your business. So now that we have that clarity, which really just came honest to God this month, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like at the yes, beginning I'm like, of 2018, <laughs> now it feels like, okay, let's blow this thing up because it just felt so misaligned for a long time. And we would power through and be like, we're like, screw the nine to five. We should be so grateful. And I remember in a mastermind that we were in last year, anytime we'd bring up you know, concerns, the feedback would be like, but you guys are screw the nine to five. This should be so easy. And it stressed us out so much because we're like, that's not what it's like behind the scenes, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know? And so now throwing a kid into the mix, which has forced us to get super prioritized and super focused. I think it's led to this clarity that finally feels like, oh my God, we finally figured it out. And so now it's just a process of rebuilding to where we want to go. Okay. Well, I want to know more about this. So what is this with the lifestyle brand piece? Because, you know, I've experienced and been feeling that too, even from, you know, the focus on copy. Because I was like, I can help anyone with anything. When it comes to communication, I'm 100% confident. I can help you say anything in a clear, sincere, compassionate, honest way. But who's going to pay for it? So then I did niche down because I was like, this is something people obviously they need help because they surely don't sound like that. What they're mm-hmm. writing is not matching up, which you're so good at that, by the way. So I'm going to link to Josh and Jill's sites and stuff, but you will, you're going to love her copy too, because it is, it's exactly how you speak. And it's just so fun to read your stuff because it's like, yes, I can literally hear you saying it, which is the ultimate goal, at least in my mind Agreed. when it comes to it. I think but, so um, Anyway, but that was like so specific. And then with Naptime Empires, even I'm like, okay, so this is a broader thing. And it really does. It is an umbrella that encompasses everything. But even still with Naptime Empires, I'm like, but it's not just like moms that are listening to my podcast. And it's not even people who may not even have businesses yet. So it feels like there's even something more. But then like what you were saying, it feels a little scary because it's like, so what? Like, I'm just going to talk about everything. Is it, yeah, can, it, can it be that easy? Can I literally yeah. just talk about whatever I want to talk about? So how are you reconciling that in the sense that screw the nine to five felt broad, but now you're like, you're giving it permission. It's like, you're letting it unbutton its pants at the dinner table. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh. This is why I love you and your analogies. They are so <laughs> spot on. Also, because I always unbutton my pants <laughs> after a big meal. It's like the best feeling of relief. <laughs> Because, and you and I have had many conversations. I actually treasure, I don't know, I've probably like gushed over this many times to you, but truly like our conversations are some of the most empowering and just encouraging for me because Mm -hmm. you are so honest and transparent and so good at giving people permission to do what they want to do and work through the seasons of entrepreneurship and figure it out at your own pace. I feel like there's so much noise online that says it all has to be figured out in this amount of time. And if you haven't figured it out, like you're failing, right? Mm -hmm. But if I'm keeping it real, like it's been five years of figuring it out and that's okay because we've had some great successes. We've had some great setbacks. We've had some, learned some really good lessons and met some great people along the way. So like, I totally get it. There's a million things I want to talk about other than like how to use Instagram stories to build your list. You know, like I don't want to always talk about marketing and money and like how to like increase your conversion rates. That stuff feels so heavy to me when there's so much more to what we are all doing. And so I don't know how that's going to play out. Literally, we are three weeks into this aha moment, but a lot of our stuff right now is around business. So now it's about entertaining the lifestyle topics and talking about other stuff that matters to people other than like, how do I make more money? Mm. I'm really (laughs) excited about it because this is the thing. I feel like it's, it's the season in itself where we're, I guess I'm finishing 2013, five years in April will be five years since I started my business. 
And so we're on like the exact same. Yeah. It's like a similar track. And ours started April, 2013 as well. What? Yeah. I've never put that together. Yes. Well, then it makes perfect sense. And I don't mean to freak anybody out who's just starting out to be like, oh my gosh. But the thing is, and this is what I had put in that email, which was actually from one I had written like a year before, but it was still relevant, which was that there is no finish line. So even though this is the clarity now, this is the clarity now based on who you are and what Mm -hmm. you want to create right now. And two years from now, it could be totally different. And that's fine because you're the one, like you guys are the ones creating it. So it's Mm going to grow and shift and change as you do. Totally. Um, But I do feel like when you first dive in, I say that it's like I was swallowed by the internet for three years. (laughs) It's like I just (laughs) gone, gone. And I just was like so in it. I was like, okay, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. And it all started with divine inspiration. But then I was like, okay, cool. Thanks, divine inspiration. I've got it from here. And then I started to feel like I needed to do this. And if I had a course, then I needed to do Facebook ads, la, 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 la. And then, yeah, I became a sharpened pencil as opposed to the well-rounded person that I used to be who would like go see a movie or watch some yeah. Netflix or like have, have a, a life. What's going on in the world, you know, as opposed to what's going on in the online business world or the Facebook groups that I happen to belong to. So which is such a small snapshot, yes. right? Like we think our world is so big, this online marketing space, because we pay hyper attention to it. Yeah. And there's this like web celeb kind of thing going on right now. But if you really dial it back, like we're all just entrepreneurs trying to figure this out. And like, since when does it have to be this like fame play? It's so weird. Like once you pull back from it, you're like, truthfully, we scrapped our whole email list except for like a few thousand people. Cause we're like, no, Mm -hmm. like let's start over. Like Mm -hmm. let's rebuild with what we actually want to talk about. Mm -hmm. I don't care about numbers anymore. Like for so long I was holding on to like, oh my God, we have a 40,000 person email list. That means we're doing so well. (laughs) But if those people don't care, what does it matter? Right. Right. Or if they're just there for your cheat sheet. And I started to feel that way too, because my list blew up when I did ads for my conversational copy Mm -hmm. cheat sheet, which is really helpful. And I appreciate that it's helped people feel like, oh, wait, I can just actually write like I speak and that's enough. And that's considered, you know, air quotes, professional and whatever. But I was like, okay, but if you just want me for tips, like sometimes I just want to talk about whatever random thing I just noticed or a quote that I found that was inspiring. And if you want me to be a performing monkey, then I'm not going to be able to do that. And I think that's probably why I ghosted for a while where I was just like, no, I'm not gonna, because I don't know if they're even interested in what I have to say. And the email that you're talking about, it's funny you say one of your emails, because I'm like the only email I've sent in the last few months. (laughs) Yes, yes, that one, (laughs) that one. But the response to it has been so beautiful because people are like, I I don't doubt it. That it's just... When you're speaking, you're pouring into us from a genuine place. And it's not just like, ah, I feel like I need to be in their inbox or they're going to forget about me. And that's true. And I do know the right people are going to stick around and Mm -hmm. be listening and be there. Just like you said, I feel like even if I sent it to 20,000 people and even if a certain percentage opened it, I'm like, that still reached thousands of people. And I've genuinely been at the point where I'm like, I would be totally down to start it all over, burn it down to the ground. And start it all over and have a thousand people who really care to listen because that's yeah. how I started. And it felt freaking magical to just know that people who are there want to be there. And I mean, that's literally all we need. And, and, and it is. Why is that a bad thing? thing? Yeah. You know, like, why is it a bad thing to rebuild? It's not like people paying attention online is a finite resource. Mm -hmm. (laughs) There's so many people and it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger. Like guaranteed once the next recession hits, there's going to be a whole bunch of other people who come into our worlds Mm -hmm. and they're like, I want to know more about whatever you guys are doing. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Whether it's copy, whether it's courses, whether it's whatever, whether it's life, whether it's the journey at least from my perspective, where I'm sitting right now with all the f- hormones and all the feels, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Like, I feel like for so long we tried to measure up because that's what you're supposed to portray online. And I'm just, dudes, I'm so over it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I love, and I appreciate what you said about me being real and transparent or whatever. And I just know that when we see it, I can't remember where it came from. I know it was Elizabeth Dialto where I first heard, if you spot it, you got it. It might've been Mm. from Susan Hyatt or I don't know, but I love it. If you spot it, you got it because you're totally the same and everything that you say you appreciate about me. I'm like, yep, 
mirror, mirror, you know, cause I really appreciate that about you too. But I, I just am curious to see if it's something that's happening in collective consciousness, like literally in this time, or if it's literally a cycle. And as people kind of mature and become upperclassmen, so to speak, in their businesses, if they, again, snap out of the fog of feeling like I have to buy all the online courses or I have to do this certain business model or squirrel, no, I'm going to try this one, squirrel, no, I'm going to try this one, mm-hmm. for people to realize like you can still be a human and a person, and that's actually going to benefit your business and you can create something that you actually enjoy and it doesn't have to look a certain way. It's really about what you're feeling inspired by because I just can't be F to do it any other way at this point. Right. And I don't know if it's like you go through this at a certain stage in your journey or if it's just something that's happening online right now as we go through this big shift, which I don't know if anyone else is seeing it, but I sure as heck I'm seeing it. It's just people's businesses are changing. The whole online marketing, online business space is changing. It's evolving as it should. Yeah. And there are some big entrepreneurs I've been talking to lately who are going through this exact same thing. They're just not talking about it because I feel like they are a bit nervous to talk about, oh, I don't really have it all together behind mm-hmm. the scenes. Because mm-hmm. that's a very scary, hard thing to admit. Yeah, You know what I mean? It's a very hard thing to admit because your success is built on the fact that you've got it all figured out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so when you don't, it feels intimidating. But really, if we're keeping it real, people are looking for resonance and yes. transparency. And they just want to know that they aren't the only one feeling the feels. Yeah, it's actually, it is. It's the opposite where you feel like people expect or need you to be you know, having everything together. And then when you're like, no, but I really don't, or I'm going through it, it endears people to you even more because they're like, wow, now I really feel like, like the episode I was just recording a conversation with my friend, Susie Ashworth and her dog barked. I'm like, it's totally fine. (laughs) I think it's great when the dog barks or my little sharky vacuum just went off at 11 while we were recording. And I was like, hang on, I got to mute and go turn sharky off because it's like, then people will realize that we're not in like these magical tucked away insulated studio, like recording yeah. and they can see, Oh, I can be on a podcast too. Even if my husband's in the other room, shutting a cabinet too loudly or, you know, whatever, it just helps people see. And that's the freaking point connection, as opposed to feeling yes. like you have to pretend to be on a pedestal because then it sure hurts when you fall down and realize oh. like, Oh wait, that wasn't actually even real. So yeah. All right. Amen. Well, Preach it. I'm excited to see how this develops because I definitely, that's been the evolution I've been going through. Like with the first trimester of awesome, when I was like, I want to host a mastermindy experience. And it was about helping, I forget what I said, fam focused women entrepreneurs to build their aligned empires. I'm just making this up as I went, but it was something like without becoming antisocial, asexual workaholics. <laughs> like that was cool. <laughs> because I do, I was asexual. My husband was gone. So there was nothing on that front. Um, he was on the submarine and everything, but I also wasn't getting out of my house and yeah. it was just like work became everything. And again, I don't know. I needed that, right? Like that it happened as it happened for my highest mm-hmm. good. And I think, but I feel like not everybody has to go through that. And I do feel like part of the reason why I went through it is so I can catch people before they get to that point and be like, all right, but like, what are you actually doing for you? And does it really need to be that hard? And does it really need to be that complicated? And what are you doing to celebrate? And how can you make it more fun? It's also good to say that kind of crap because it's good when people repeat it back to me (laughs) because I need it. Yeah. Well, that's again, why I love reading your stuff and why I love our conversations because I always walk away from them being like, oh my God, I'm not a total mess. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. And the mess is, that's the magic. And the fact that we're like, we're humans and we're just doing this thing and we're putting one foot in front of the other or putting our booties on the couch, whatever the day happens to call for. But I mean, even on that note, and this is probably for everyone listening, like this is not that big of a deal. But for me, it's been a huge deal because I've always prided myself on being a doer, like the person Mm -hmm. who can push through and just get it done. And yesterday was my first day where I literally, it was Wednesday and I didn't do any work. I did one call. I did my call with my assistant and then I did another call with someone that I was just like lending some advice to. And then I walked into the office and I said to Josh, I am flat out exhausted right now. Like I have no brain space. I'm so pregnant. Mm -hmm. I think I just need to go like lie in bed all day and 
read, which I am not, I've been like a self-proclaimed non-reader. I've read <laughs> three books this month. I said to Josh, oh my God, I've read three books. He's like, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> but yesterday was the first time in my six years of entrepreneurship where I've taken a day in the middle of the week and literally done nothing oh my other gosh. than lay there and read and finally taken care of myself. And wow. I think it's because Kai's so close to getting here. Mm -hmm. My F levels have dropped so significantly. <laughs> it's a special hormone tech <laughs> that they have to run a panel for. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't give any Fs anymore about what I should be doing. This is what I feel like I need to be doing right now. And I'm finally going to give myself the permission to like do it differently for once in my life versus like even six months ago, I mean, I'm 38 weeks pregnant. I'm still working. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Even six months ago, I'd be like, no, I can power through this. I'm stronger than this. I've got mm -hmm, this. Mm -hmm. But yesterday I was just like, what happens if I gave myself some grace? <laughs> yes. Oh my god. What gosh. happens if I was actually nice to myself and actually took my own advice mm -hmm. when I tell people inside, screw you, like maybe you need a break. Like maybe you need to just like take a breath. What happens if I actually gave myself that permission? It was heaven. Okay. Well, that is literally everything. <laughs> and it's seriously, it's taken me years and it's so funny listening to it because I remember flashback to like 2014 and I was in my second year of business and it was a big deal for me to go on our family vacation. And, and I went laptopless, as I say, cause I just left my <laughs> laptop behind. And that was like, Whoa, what a revolutionary <laughs> idea to not take my laptop with me to the Texas Hill country where we barely have Wi-Fi. Like, why would I take my laptop anyway? But it was like such a big deal. And I tried to plan an email in advance or whatever. And seriously, the analogy I've been using, I can't believe I, if I remember if I said this in my conversation with Susie too, but it felt like I was on a runaway train at a certain point. You know, when I started my business, I had no expectation. I thought I'd make 20 G's in a year and that would be cool. And then it happened, you know, like in the first six weeks and I was like, oh dear. <laughs> so then I realized, what just whoa, happened? <laughs> whoa. Oh. And then I put all these expectations on myself. And so then I was just putting the pressure, like, you know, if I'm not making a million by my third year, then I'm like a failure of human right? potential and whatever. And, and who so, even knows? I, I said that to myself too. If we haven't hit a million in one year by five years, it, I'm like, who cares? Yeah. Who well, even especially notices? Especially if it's not what you're enjoying. And yeah, if, you, if you are an asexual, antisocial work colleague, <laughs> then that's like, there's something to be considered. But I feel like I was on a runaway train. And then at the end of 2015, kind of the, basically once Deacon got here, it's weird because it's like time sped up. And it's crazy to me how fast those two years have gone. But then in my business, it's like I had to literally slow it down mm -hmm. like to a full stop almost. Like honestly, it's been a thing for me to even work at all. Like 2017, I barely – and my revenue reflect. I'm not saying like, oh, and I made all this money while not working. I didn't. It was a very low revenue year for me but I like barely worked. There were times when I would host things because I was like, I loved hosting a co-working space because then I would show up for my business at least two hours in a given week. <laughs> like I was yeah. like, I really appreciate the accountability. I'm going to work on something dedicated to space for two hours. But it's because I had to unlearn the habits that I had built in my first years of business where I was like, all the time I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it at night and I'm going to do it during the day and I'm going to do it on weekends. And when it just filled all the time, like just a blob. And now I literally just feel like the other metaphor is whenever you have a ceiling fan going and you switch it into reverse mode. And so it <laughs> slows down, slows down, stops for a second, and then it starts back going and that's what I feel like the phase that I'm in right now. It's like, okay, I had to completely stop and realize this is not how I want to operate. So well, and I even then, remember that conversation with you at Mastermind Talks mm, at dinner one day. And you had said like, yeah, I'm not really doing anything this year because, <laughs> because I just don't feel like it. And I have, I've made money in my business, so I have cash reserves. So I'm right. cool there, but I'm giving myself space to figure it out. And I was like... God, this chick has switched on to something. <laughs> because <laughs> this, this was in May 2017. And it's when Josh and I, and I remember I went home and I 
recorded something for Screw You because at that time we had put out this intention to our whole community, well, to our paid community, Screw You members, that we were like chasing this $2 million goal. This is how we're going to hit it. We have to run this much traffic, convert at this percent to make this amount of money. And it was so empty mm. and meaningless. And I think I was saying that to you. And then when you kind of flipped it and you were like, I'm not even like, I'm literally just kind of letting things <laughs> come my way and like I'm journaling and I'm figuring it out and I'm giving myself space. I was just like, oh my God, imagine if we gave ourselves space. Yes. Like, it was such a, like a light bulb moment for me. Mm, I remember that, our conversation in the dark on the bus on yeah. the way home. <sighs> and hello, that's where I got pregnant. I that's so funny because you and I were talking, I had gone through, I've talked about this a little bit, so I'm not afraid to talk about it, but I had gone through a miscarriage in late 2016 and I was talking to you about it. And then you were saying like rainbow babies and this all happens for a reason and blah, blah, blah. And that's where I got, I just think it's so ironic. It's Essentially so... you got me pregnant. <laughs> basically, <laughs> basically that's it. I'm Kai's other mom. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh, it was so, I just loved that. It was so exciting. And I will never forget that conversation. So I know that it's all just part of the story. And I think it's really amazing that at 38 weeks, because I was super ambitious. I literally was just talking about this in another mom's group that we're both in, but that 37, 38, 39, and freaking 40 weeks pregnant with Deacon <laughs> that I never expected was like one of my most profitable months ever. In sales, it was like crazy over a hundred thousand dollars between in a course about copy promotion I did and then a 90 day year one. And I swear it's because my self care was on fire because I was yeah. like, I thought I was gonna go into labor weeks ago, people. So I don't even <laughs> care about anything because I'm gonna go into labor any minute. So I was like getting my hair done and doing a couple walks a day because I was getting massages just to try to get the guy to get out of there and everything. So I'm like, I know there's a correlation with that. And when yeah. I look back at all my most fun and most profitable ventures, it was always like being magically detached from the outcome because I was like, I wasn't even going to do this promotion. Okay, sure. Yeah. And, and just holding it lightly is a term I've heard a lot from Denise lately that I love. Just holding it lightly. I'm just holding this launch lightly as opposed to clinging for dear life because to be honest, nothing good comes from that. Totally. That and you feel like crap when you do that. That was like pretty much 2017 for me. It's like, I felt like I had a vice grip on things because mm -hmm. I needed to control the outcome and it never worked out for me. Yeah. <laughs> I had some of the biggest disappointments and some of the most frustrating moments last year because I was so attached mm -hmm. to everything and the reputation of it all and the like facade of it all. And I love Denise's stuff. Like, I don't know her personally. I would love to because her honesty and transparency just yes. lights up my life. And even her babies bring abundance. Like even that I just love. And I would have to echo that because I just, the focus and the prioritization and the permission to just kind of enjoy this phase of my life that's been so drastically different to anything I've ever done or how I've ever shown up. Yeah. I want to talk about it. And just, again, for those who may become pregnant in the near or distant future, or they're just curious about like what it's like to be running a business while you are pregnant, what's it been like for you? And how was it like in your first trimester where you're really tired and how did that affect things? And what were the things that you thought I'm going to do all of these things. And then now that he's almost here, you're like, well, screw that because this is what we're getting done. And I'm not going to feel guilty or bad about anything we didn't get done. Or like, because for me, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to batch all the content. And then I was like, oh, never mind. <laughs> Let's yeah. just get him here. JK. We'll figure it out next year. <laughs> <laughs> so for us, I found out I was pregnant in like mm, beginning of June. And we were gearing up to do a big push for Screw You. We were raising the prices. So I literally, even though I felt like garbage, that entire time I powered through it because again, I had the script. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. I power through. I'm the doer. I get things done. So I powered through it. I remember the final day of our card open before the prices went up, we did like a four hour live broadcast. And afterwards I said to Josh, I don't want to speak words. I just want, <laughs> I just want <laughs> silence, please. I am damn near death right now. Literally the next day we went on sabbatical. It was the worst choice we could have made. Mm -hmm. We went on a one month sabbatical. I'd never do that again. And we did a cross country road trip. I just felt like such garbage because I was in T1. 
But I was also so grateful that I had that space to just feel like garbage for a month because if I had to show up and like get things done, I think I would have emotionally just crumbled. And then in August, the last month of T1, I was kind of starting to come out of it. And then once trimester two hit and I had this energy, I was like, let's get back into her. I'm going to get all the things done. I did like two promotions. They went bad. (laughs) Started batching all our content, started doing all the things. And then trimester three hit and I was like, ma, slowly withering again. And for so long I powered through it because I was like, no, I just have to go through my Asana dashboard and tick all these things off. And then I can have a break. And I kept saying to our team, like, I have the light at the end of the tunnel. I know that once February rolls around, like I can finally give myself a break, which is so crazy. And it's very ironic that it's February 1st today. Mm. (laughs) I just realized that because yesterday I finally took my first day just for myself to take care of myself. So it's been a big lesson for me in taking a breath and like not getting in my head about it. Because this time last year was when we were like, no, we have to make this 2 million. Like what will it mean about us and our business if we don't hit it? Like who will we be? And like all this nonsense. And I remember I was talking to James Wedmore about it and he just said like, stop taking this stuff and yourself so seriously. Like Mm -hmm. it's ridiculous. And he said that to me and I was like, oh. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) right, right. Well, and the thing is too, like, and I have several friends as do you who have million and multi-million dollar revenue businesses, who knows what the actual bottom lines are and whatever Mm -hmm. that's important to say, because Mm -hmm. just because someone's making millions of dollars in revenue doesn't mean that the profit looks like that. No. And they're going through the same thing. And I'm like, I know, but I'd rather be going through this when I have millions of dollars in revenue. (laughs) Like I'd rather be having my identity crisis on the side and then (laughs) the revenue is already locked. So it's easy for you to say, but it's really not. And it really is just a common experience. And I do feel like the blessing in all of this season for me, like I said, is to be able to relate to people who are going to be going through this exact same freaking thing who need to unlearn these exact things. And the identity being tied to what we do, what we do, what we do, performing mm-hmm. monkey, overachiever. Mm-hmm. This is my value because I can do this. Look, I can do this and I can help with this result. And like you said, it's just ultimately exhausting to be tied to other people's results. You know, you can lead a horse to water and of course you can encourage people and you want to deliver on what you promise, but personal responsibility, hashtag personal responsibility. Yeah. And that's something I've really had to learn. And truthfully, if I'm being super, super honest. I've never been so emotional than I've been in trimester three because the hormones going through your body and like the exhaustion and you're so uncomfortable and everything feels like it's about to change and do a complete left turn. And it really got me into my head and I would have so many like I would just cry for no reason, but it felt so great to cry. Mm. (laughs) And Josh would be like, what's happening? Can I help you? And I'm like, I'm not even upset. I just really (laughs) feel like crying right now. (laughs) (laughs) there's nothing wrong but to your point around the identity crisis which is what josh has kind of coined it as like we went through this identity crisis like who are we with this brand if we're not like make money online what is it and when things felt really uncertain for us or just a little shaky and we didn't have that clarity i mean I know it's not James who says it, but like, I can't remember who said this exactly, but like the breakthrough always comes after the breakdown. And that's what we had to go through to figure out this like level of light bulb Mm momentness. Um, and I remember saying to him in one of my crying fits (laughs) and saying like, I don't want to feel this stressed when Kai gets here. Like, I want to be able to enjoy that time with him. I want to be able to actually be present. I want to be able to like be a mom. And right now with this chaos that feels like we're going through right now, trying to figure this out and like, are we business coaches? Are we brand builders? Like, what are we? Mm -hmm. It just felt so uncomfortable at that time. And now that we're through the fog, I was like, oh, (laughs) that's why I had to go through that. That's why I had to have all those feels. That's why I had to have all those little mini breakdowns. That's why I had to like battle through this to find the clarity that would allow us to take a breath so that I could know, okay, once it, like now I'm ready. Now I'm just going to like soak it up and 
try and take in and be as present as possible because I kept saying to Josh, like, I don't want us to resent this time in our lives, Mm -hmm. you know, where we are. So when you said, I'd rather go through the identity crisis with a million dollars in revenue, I actually don't know if that's true because then you have a lot of people depending on you. Totally. Yes. (laughs) That's really scary. (laughs) Yes. No, in theory, it sounds nice, but yeah, there, there are aspects yeah, everything I do believe everything happens for our highest good and exactly as we need it to so we can get the lessons that we need. And one of those big lessons for me, and it sounds like for you too, is being able to just be more in touch with your body and your actual emotions because mm-hmm. it's easy to, again, you just become like a robot. And especially if all you're focusing on is business and there's like so much richness just in our beings that we bypass and just ignore completely in the way that we're living our lives, especially through screens and whatever. So it's powerful and so good to release. And I remember my last good cry was I was watching Parenthood. I was binge watching Parenthood over the Christmas (laughs) break. And then Jeremy just walked down and I was like, I knew you were going to walk downstairs. He'd been playing upstairs with the boys. And I was just like, I need to just chill out and watch Parenthood on my iPad. (laughs) <laughs> and I was like ugly crying so hard. I won't spoil the reason why or the episode, but I was crying so hard and he just rounds the corner and he's just used to this by now where he's like, okay. I'm like, don't, I'm fine. I just needed to let it out. I can't. Yeah. Not, boys I don't get that sometimes. Move through you. I know. But see, this is the thing as boy moms that we have to help them with because oftentimes boys are conditioned not to have feelings, especially the whole boys don't cry and that kind of thing. I actually was inspired to do a Facebook live on that sometime last year because I was in a situation where the stranger was like, be a big boy. You don't cry. I was like, can we just let boys cry if they need to? Because they're actually yeah, humans. Real. There's no reason why they don't. Anyway, sidebar. Okay. So I really just want to capture as we close out in the next five to 10, I just want to like talk about what your excited about what your ideal vision is once Kai is on the outside and in your arms and in your home and you have him established as a new roomie out of the <laughs> roomie. Like <laughs> what's your as for now and things can I love change. Your sayings. <laughs> things can change. But what's your ideal setup? Like what is the vision that you want to create over the course of this next year, which is his first year of life mm-hmm. on the outside? what would be your ideal setup? Okay. So I am a hardcore planner to my core, right? I always feel out of control if I don't have a plan. And truthfully, that is one thing I really want to let go of. Like my sister was messaging me yesterday because she is, my sister married Josh's best friend from Australia. So they are currently over in Australia and she is also pregnant right now. So we are one trimester apart. So it's a really cool time in our lives. My mom is like stage five clinger. And so she's always trying to plan how we can see each other. And so Allie was saying to me like, well, what are your plans for 2018? I was like, I literally have zero. (laughs) And she was like, but you plan a year and a half in advance. I was like, I have zero plans Mm -hmm. except for the one live event we're throwing. That's it. And it is so freeing to me. My vision is I want to be present. I want to enjoy it. And I want to soak in the moments that I know are just going to be... They're just going to go by so quickly. I want to be able to have like one of our intentions is Kai Day Friday or Friday Kai Day <laughs> <That's> like, <laughs> so that we get our business to the point where it has some space mm-hmm. and we're not at the mercy of all our customers and all the things we think we should be doing and the like level we have to measure up to. Like I really want Friday Kai Day to be a thing where we can take Fridays off to just hang with our baby. Mm -hmm. That is literally my only intention for this entire time. I don't know. I'm not going to like say I'm taking this amount of work off because I know myself Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I will probably like dive back in after a few weeks, just lightly and do a few things just so that I'm not the type of person who just sits there and stares at a baby. I'm just not. Mm -hmm. I've never been, both Josh and I were never like, we just can't wait to have kids. (laughs) That was never us. And it really wasn't until I got pregnant the first time and then lost it and realized, both of us realized, oh, this is something we want. Mm 
So now it's different, you know, now we're like, oh yeah, we can't wait to meet this little dude. Like I'm so excited and just to see his personality and just to be in the moment with him. But I literally have zero plans and I also have zero expectations (laughs) because I'm sure it's really going to be hard AF. And I mean, I've said to you a few times, like I'm getting bombarded with negative advice, which is really stressing me out. And you kept saying like, start filtering that unsolicited advice. Like just don't listen to that right now because it's going to get you in your head and your experience will probably be drastically different to what theirs is. Um, so I really am trying to not go in with a plan and Josh was doing a podcast interview yesterday and he said to someone like, they just said like, I heard you're going to be a new dad soon. And he's like, yeah, what's your best piece of advice? And they're like, have zero expectations. He's like, that's okay. I already have none. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, Both of us are just like, we don't know what to expect. Like we'll go with the flow. And my sister-in-law said to me at one point, like, get ready to like lose your social life and your sleep and all this and go through these emotional ups and downs. And I said like, yeah, I've been an entrepreneur for six years, like my 24 seven. So if that's what I can expect, like I've got this Got it. Because emotional ups and downs is my two, four, seven. So I'm just trying to like be easy with it for yes. once in my life and uh. just see what happens. And I actually am very excited to go back and listen to this episode because I feel like we've shot it at such a unique time in that I'm just about to go into this. Yes. I've just had a big breakthrough business-wise. So there's a whole lot of like perspective that's kind of coming right now. So it'll be interesting to listen back to it. But yeah, I have zero plans. <laughs> I love that you said that because literally right after I got off the last call with Susie, I just wrote a new way of doing business on this notebook piece of paper that I'm doodling on. And then I put stop planning sucking the fun out of it. And then I wrote down things that I want to help people unlearn because this is what I am unlearning, Mm -hmm. which is the drill sergeant voice, the mean girl voice, the critic, the doubter, imposter syndrome, the pressure, doing it all by yourself. And then practicing the play, the fun, the faith, the trust, holding things lightly, the presence instead of the pressure, practice the presence and leading with the vision of what you want to create as opposed to feeling like a slave to something that you like threw the ball out there and now you just have to sprint after it like a marathon until you get there because it's literally everything. And I also used to be super planny planner pants and <laughs> I literally like people were what is what's what are your goals for 2000? I'm like, there's not a smart goal in sight over here. Yeah. I just literally like and I appreciate planning and what it's there for. But truly, anytime I've tried, I'll make a list of something, but I know I'm never going to go back to it until I find it in my notebook like a few months later. And I'm like, oh, that eventually got done and that eventually got done. And this one, I just realized I didn't care about doing, so that didn't get done. But you can set the intention. Like for me, it is self-publishing my first book this year. It's really the only thing that I can, that actually stands out. Anything else feels like I'm really faking it, like forcing it to care about anything else. But it's, that's literally it. And it's like that with parenting because all you can do in those first few months is to just be physically present. And you're like, oh, hey, dude, we got this. You and me, we're going to figure this out. And it is. It's so many parallels with business too. So you're already a great mom and you're going to be. And I do feel like it's good to have the space. I just posted a hilarious video that my friend Sarah sent me in the playground and I'll link to it. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but (laughs) it's basically one of the, you know, there's a caricature, right? Of parenting being hard and la la la. And of course, sometimes it is, and it's good for us to be able to vent and talk about the hard stuff, but it's also like, but let's not like wallow in it or pretend it doesn't have a light. Everything has a shadow and a light. Like that's life. That's this experience. So like, yeah, you're going to be tired, but I mean, you can also take a nap. (laughs) No one's stopping you from totally nap. I already am tired. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I sleep in 60 minute intervals right now because I constantly have to go to the bathroom. So like, and I'm constantly uncomfortable. So when people are like, get ready to not sleep, I'm like, Holmes, I've been doing that for the last two months. Mm -hmm. Like if it's sleep that you think I'm actually is going to bring me down. Like I also have a husband who's in the business with me, you know, like we can tag in yeah, and tag out. Also, do we not all do this so that we can create the kind of lifestyle we want? Like mm-hmm. I'm not trying to trip and think that I'm not about to hire a nanny the first chance I can. Yeah. That's absolutely happening. Like I'm not going to not have support. It's yeah. just, I don't want to try and do it all and be stressed and frazzled and not enjoy it. Yeah. I'd rather put key pieces in place that allow me to enjoy it. So it's a really important point about peeing because 
Well, I wonder what's important about that pee. Let's talk about frequent <laughs> urination because I remember like the first night we were home with Deacon and he slept for like a three hour stretch. And I was like, oh, I feel like I can take on the world because I hadn't slept for a three hour stretch in months mm-hmm. because I was waking up to pee all the time in the last couple of months. And I do remember being like, oh, and even with Bryson, if it was like, a five hour stretch or whatever towards maybe the six month mark. But I'd be like, wow, I never thought I'd be able to cope this well. Cause I used to feel like, oh, I, I have to have this much sleep or else I'm like miserable. And it really wasn't the case. You just adapt, you do, you're powerful mm-hmm. and you will figure it out. And you will, you know, the most important lessons f- just to pass along from the alum moms and the Naptime Empire guests who have come before you. The themes that I have noticed are the grace the compassion Mm. Mm. and honoring what you need in the moment and allowing support and permission to do all of the above. Like those are the highlights. Those are the themes. Those are the patterns. Those are the lessons that we all need to just keep repeating back to each other whenever we start to feel like WTF or I don't know if I can do this or why did I do this in the first place, whether it's parenting or business. And you're just, you're going to be such a great mom. And I'm really excited <laughs> to maybe meet and squeeze him. Remember, I'm going to be yeah. in Vancouver. I know. Uh, I don't even want to tell you that we're moving back to Toronto in June. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, eventually. eventually. I need a support system around me. Yes. Okay. We have zero family out here and it's starting to get really real what that looks like. And I'm like, nope. <laughs> oh, well, that's exciting. And actually that works out fine because I was trying to figure out how I could stay. Everyone else is going to be leaving that day. And I was like, well, but if I could stay and see Jill, that's fine. I'll come to Toronto or we'll, we'll meet somewhere else. I'm sorry. I feel, I totally meant to tell you that too. No, well, now sorry. it's on the podcast. So now we go. we've got it on the record. <laughs> Toronto, get excited. The stand are coming back with Stan Tiny in tow. All right. Well, okay. Stan Tiny. <laughs> Is there anything else that we haven't covered that, again, from your unique perspective, I just so love that we got to do this before he actually arrived. Is there anything else that you would want to say to someone who either is pregnant right now and maybe scrambling to feel like I need to get to a certain point before I can actually, like, you can't come out until I have this ready. Or just someone who might be in that position where you're like, I don't know. I don't know if I can handle it. Like, what's your perspective in this moment that you would want to share something that we haven't covered? I mean, we as entrepreneurs, just by our very nature of going into entrepreneurship, at least the ones that stick it out, we're resilient, man. Like we're resilient and we're resourceful. And when push comes to shove, like you'll figure it out. That's one thing I've realized is like, I don't have all the answers and I don't know what it's going to look like. And I'm sure that there's times where I'll be like, wow, I was (laughs) not expecting this. (laughs) But also I've felt that way with business yes. so many times that I'm like, how could this be that much different really for the emotional turmoil? Yes, I have a tiny human to take care of, but I mean, I take care of 800 <laughs> inside screw you on the daily. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I already have a lot of responsibility and ups and downs to kind of just go off of. And I realized that I'll figure it out. Like. We really will. I have total confidence that entrepreneurs, we're a different breed. You know, one of my last prenatal classes, this couple came in to share their birth experience and their biggest thing was that they had never spent four weeks together Mm 24-7. And so they said that it was really tense and it was emotional and they were fighting a lot and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, I said to the chick beside me, like, or I said to Josh and the chick beside me, like, I've if that's the case, like, I feel like I've got this because Josh and I have been attached at the hip running a business together, which is like a pressure cooker of that's emotions. That's very true. Yes. Especially for your relationship to like, yeah, you guys have had plenty of opportunities to work through your stuff and figure out how your true partnership, like your actual relationship partnership and your business partnership. Totally. Works. And it just takes grace and patience and communication, whether your partner is in your business or not. Like, just allowing yourself to realize that they're your partner in crime and they're going through this as well. And like, you just have to sometimes like white flag it and be like, I don't know the answer to this right now, but Mm -hmm. I'm just going to do the best that I can. And like, I love the Abraham Hicks quote, like I am where I am and where I am is okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to really try and keep that in mind and like, be like, I'm not super mom. This is the first time I'm doing this. (laughs) I don't know what I'm doing, but I trust myself to figure it out and I know that I'll be able to tap into my intuition to see what I think is best for him. And like, 
even if I mess up in the first year, is he really going to remember it? <laughs> like, um, I don't even have a nursery for him. <laughs> it's like, I just, I don't know. Someone's like, what's your nursery look like? And I was like, it looks like our office. <laughs> <laughs> He'll sleep in a bassinet in our room because I'm not giving up our office. So I don't know yeah. if that's the right thing to say, but I just know that that's where I'm currently at. And maybe I'm just going to allow myself to change my mind if that comes up. Or- if you want to boot him out of your room. No, that's yeah. really cool. And this is the thing. There's no freaking right answer. This is the other thing. Like there is no right answer. Like we were saying, there is no finish line and you could, oh my gosh, if you ask for, obviously you know this now. And I warned you as soon as you said you were pregnant, mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, well brace yourself because if you ask something on Facebook, you're going to yeah. get a million because moms love to give opinions. Mm-hmm. And um, so negative there's the no... <laughs> right answer, except for the one that works for you guys in the highest good of all, obviously safety, love, like those basic foundations are covered, then really there's no right answer. And except, like I said, I do actually believe of all the people who claim to be parenting experts, I really do most connect with Dr. Shafali's stuff because I really do feel like this is why I want to read it and digest it and do some book reports because this is what I've been feeling just as I've been on my own spiritual journey or whatever her stuff aligns most, like if there was an air quote or an answer, I do feel like it's hers. <laughs> I do <laughs> want to check out her stuff. because it's this mutual respect and it's about yeah. being open to knowing that we're here to learn from them just as much as we're guiding them and like honoring their beings. Not to say again, that you let them like eat cake for every meal. It's not that. And people are quick to dismiss or roll their eyes or whatever, but it's like, no, just honor that like you're a human, you're going to F up. You're going to feel bad for yelling or you're going to snap or whatever, because you're human. But guess what? So is your child and your child is learning from you. Like, I forget what it was, something that I said and Bryson was like, no, it's this. And I was like, Ooh, you're right. I was wrong. And I intentionally, I could have just stopped it. You're right. But I also wanted to say I was wrong so that I'm not one of the people who's like, you can never admit that you're wrong. You know, like it's okay to admit that you're wrong and it's okay to make mistakes as long as we're learning from them. That's all we can ever do. So, and we're all just ever doing the best we can in any given moment. Yeah. And as long as that's how you're showing up, then like, how could you ever possibly be doing it wrong? Right. If you're like, I was just doing my best at that exact moment. So yeah. I'm sorry if I didn't get it right, you know? Yeah. I, I don't know. It's just, you don't know what you don't know. And I'm very aware that I do not know <laughs> anything to do with parenting yet. So <laughs> I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'm not too concerned. Yeah, you will. You are. And if not, I'll just blow up your eye message. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just text me because I know everything. <laughs> but like, any B what the actual F is going on with this particular thing. Yes. I'll look it up in the book. No, really. But that's my thing. I feel like it's just a softening for me, from my perspective. My biggest learning is that there's not even really a right and wrong. It's like about what's true for each of us. And even with Bryson watching shows and if he's like, oh, the bad guys, I'm like, well, but even the bad guys like hurt people, hurt people. And Mm -hmm. it's important to have compassion because they're making those choices because they're hurting inside and they're not aligned with who they really are because who they really are is love. And all these things. (laughs) He's Uh, like, I just like watching Power Rangers. Right. I just like Batman. It's okay. But yeah, no, I love this conversation and I love you. And I'm really thankful for you spending, you know, this time of this particular day, not just reading one of your books, but I do want to hear your book reports of the other ones that you were reading too, because if you're reading them, then I know they've got to be, (laughs) they've got to be good if they're hooking you in. So yeah, I'll absolutely share. All right, friend. Well, I'm going to catch you on the flip side. And like I said, I really do feel like we should do a follow up once he's here and you're like, okay, cool. Here we go. We're hitting our stride, whatever that looks like. And it's different for every season, but I'm really excited for you and grateful for you sharing your perspective and your lessons and your insights today. Thank you so much for having me on and just for putting this message out there and just for always helping me and just listening and just being the perfect person to give permission. I just love you and I'm grateful we're friends. I love you. Bye. 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 Bye.
I told you it was a good one, dude. And I also told you I was going to give you a little bit of homework after the call. So here's what I want you to consider. You can take out a pen and paper and you can journal on this or just pull up an Instagram post and tag me at Nikki L. H. Brown and whatever your response is. But I just wanted to give you some food for thought and some questions to get your gears turning and actually apply any nuggets from this conversation to your life and your business right now. So just a few questions for you to think about. Number one, when was the last time you took a break to refocus? Not to say that it has to be, like she was saying, a month-long sabbatical, or it could be a day, or it could be an hour. I mean, seriously, if that's the deal and you're having a hard time finding an hour, then we have some bigger fish to fry and we'll get to that. (laughs) But when was the last time truly that you just gave yourself a break? You know, if you feel like you're escaping or screwing the nine to five, you didn't escape the nine to five to work a 24 seven. So when was the last time you gave yourself some time and some space? Number two, what was the secret to your most profitable month? If you go back while you're taking your break, maybe, and you're rewinding, what was the secret? What were you doing when you had your most profitable business month to date in a way that actually felt good? I mean, it's also good if it didn't feel good, then you can think about what were you doing because you don't want to repeat that. But like I was saying back with my example of when I was just trying to go into labor with Diki and I had a ridiculously profitable month because I was kind of detached from the outcome and I was really taking good physical care of myself and resting as I needed to not push, push, pushing, but still taking action. It was just super leveraged and meaningful action. And then along both of those lines, just a goal check, gut check. Why do you care about the goal that you're currently aiming for? Or do you? If not, again, all of these relate back to each other. Because if you're just pushing yourself after a goal that you don't even really care about, it's a vanity goal or you feel like I'm supposed to have this goal because everybody else does, just be honest about it and think about why. Why do you actually want to achieve that goal? Or why do you actually want to feel this way? And it'll either help you delete the goal, permission to delete because you don't actually really care about it, or it'll just get you fired up about it to take the aligned and inspired action and move your feet to make it happen and bring it into reality. Okay, again, answers or ahas with any or all of those, tag me on Facebook or Instagram, Nikki Lidge Brown, join me in the playground, and I'll catch you next time. This show may be over, but the conversation is just beginning. Head on over to naptimeempires.com slash Facebook so you can join my free, wait, did I say free? I mean priceless, rapidly growing community of Naptime Empire builders for deeper discussions, behind the scenes scoop, and of course, updates whenever I've got new stuff coming up for you. Naptimeempires.com slash Facebook. See you there. See you next time. Thanks for listening. (laughs) 